Hi, good morning. I'm Tom White, and welcome to Market Day Report. Well, CPI released, and let's see what the markets are doing over in Chicago. March corn, 433, that's up two and a quarter. The May's trading at 444 even, that's up one and a half. Uh, the July's trading at 453, that's up three quarters. And the Dece going out is at 470 and three quarters. So it looks like uh, the corn's getting some legs here. Hopefully we found a bottom. Moving on to the soybeans over in Chicago. We've got the March at 1192 and a quarter. That's down three quarters. The May is trading at 1195 and a half. That's down two and a quarter. The July trading at 1204 and a half. That's down three. And going out to SEP, 1175. That is down a quarter. Looking at the Chicago wheat, March trading at six dollars and three quarters. That's up three and a quarter. Uh, the May's trading at six dollars and a quarter. That's up one. So we're getting some six dollar prints. The July trading at 599 and three quarters, that's down a half. And going out to the D620, and that's down three quarters. Now let's go over to Kansas City, the hard red wheat. March trading at 595, that's down three and three quarters. The May's trading at 592 and three quarters, that's down four. And the July is trading at 585, that is down four. Going on to the spring wheat in Minneapolis. The March trading 677 and a quarter, that's down five and a quarter. May trading at 676 and a half, that's down four and a half. And let's go out to the Dece, that's seven dollars. That hasn't moved, that's unchanged. That's probably not even trading. Um, and that's it. Let's go to the cotton now, finish out before we get to Ben. Uh, March 9105, that's trading up 52 points. The May's trading at 9198, that's up 68 points. And we're, we have the pleasure of visiting with Ben. Pushing from the mill, crop experts from Whitehall, Maryland. Ben, how you doing today? Good morning, Tom. I'm doing well, and I really appreciate hearing that wheat is starting with a six because in our community, a little bit last week, uh, some of the folks in Pennsylvania started to put some fertilizer, started to make that first pass of nitrogen on their wheat. Not all of them, but a few. And, of course, uh, as a lot of the listeners and viewers know, we're in that Maryland-Pennsylvania line, and in Maryland, uh, the state controls when we can start applying fertilizer, when the farmers can start applying manure or fertilizer. And at the moment, they're sticking with their March 1st date. So brings a little bit of optimism to the uh, wheat crop with uh, putting the six back in front of it. So I appreciate that. So uh, are you getting that snow uh, coming down to your coast? Are you getting uh, the weather we, to affect your uh, yeah, fields? We are, Tom. And I tell you, it's, uh, I should have snapped and sent a picture in this morning for the viewers. It's, it's a beautiful snow, uh, two to three inches so far on the ground, really wet. But the, probably the most beautiful part of it is very little sticking to the road. There was a little bit, but now... We were we're we're right on that 30, 32 degree mark at the moment, and it's supposed to end shortly. So bring some moisture. Certainly not hurting anything, uh, because again, it's just before we really need to kick off and get going in the fields. Yeah. So any any kind of uh, plant intentions now that you're thinking of? Is, nothing changes over. It's too early to say, right? You know, it's it's interesting. I have said for years that. In our community, it's pretty much a full rotation. Corn, soybeans, they don't budge. But I was looking at some charts that University of Maryland put out this week. And yes, I'm in the fertilizer business. Yes, fertilizer prices are significantly down. But at the same time, the overall cost, because of inflation, of everything else, and of course, carrying costs with interest, this will be the second or third most expensive corn crop folks put in. And when you start looking at $80, $90, $100 higher than last year was higher, but it's down some. But when you look at the long-term trends, it's still an expensive crop. So it'll be very interesting to see if uh, we do see some shift to soybeans this year. So that's a conversation from the, from the farmers locally. Is that what you're hearing? Yes. And it, a little bit, you know, you've got to, again, 90% won't budge. But a lot of the folks, uh, some of these folks that will run a lot of rented ground, 
they're contemplating uh, less input costs, of course, to plant soybeans, and just just kind of watching. Uh, so I think we'll see a little bit of a shift, but not enough to affect any regional markets, I don't think. Okay. And any anything else that's on your mind that you could uh, want to share with us? That's... Um, other than, uh, again, we looks like we had virtually no frost in the ground uh, prior to this snow, and it had been warm. And, again, back to the Maryland uh, decision, there's a group that will be deciding. Uh, they look at ground temperature, growing degree days, et cetera, and frost in the ground. So I have a feeling sometime prior to March 1st, you're going to hear me come on on a Tuesday morning and say they turned us loose and the first application of manure and fertilizer is happening right now on small grain because it, Tom a couple weeks ago we had eight inches of snow six eight inches melt away and the, the wheat of course loved that free nitrogen from the good lord and uh, had greened up and now now that's really gotten a lot of folks uh, anxious that maybe it's time to go ahead and put on some more fertilizer. Oh, that's that sounds great. Thanks. Always good stuff. Uh, we got to take a short break. We're going to come back. We have to pay some bills. We'll come back after our sponsors.